Cloud. Right, happy to continue with Vladimir Baranovsky, who'll speak on quantization, churn characters, and index theorems in algebraic geometry. Yes. Um, thank you very much for inviting me uh, to, to speak here. It's a pleasure. The topic of my talk is slightly different, uh, probably from classical geometry, but it, uh, it does use a lot of algebraic uh, geometry techniques. And uh, in the end, it has supposed to have some represent representation theory applications. So this has joined to work with uh, Victor Ginsburg. And so we've been sort of at this for the past couple of years, and there's some reasonably recent update. Uh, so for those that may have heard this talk before. So this, uh, the, the, uh, the general plan is just to, to talk a little bit about quantization of sheaves and modules, a quantization of coherent sheaves and algebraic geometry, then state the main results, and then just very briefly discuss where the proofs and where techniques come from. So uh, the setup on uh, quantization would be, we start with uh, a smooth variety, uh, algebraic variety over complex numbers, and an algebraic symplectic form. Of course, uh, uh, such a smooth variety would have to be of even dimension to n. And uh, a problem that comes originally out of sort of mathematical techniques of, of quantum theory would be uh, to try to consider deformation quantization for the sheaf of regular functions on M. So it means that, uh, of course, the sheaf of regular functions is a sheaf of commutative rings, commutative algebras over C. And uh, when we quantize it, we try to we're trying to find the Zariski sheaf um, of uh, which will be now, and it should be uh, uh, C of H, uh, formal power series over complex numbers. So we, we're trying to introduce this formal parameter H, and uh, we want to have a sheaf of rings, which modular H reduces to our uh, structure sheaf. And also we want, to, uh, we want this uh, sheaf of algebras to have a non-commutative product. So what's happening is, um, uh, is this. We want an identity that tells that our product is compatible with the choice of symplectic form. So what we say, we start with basically two sections of these quantized functions. We're trying to see what happens when we compute the commutator, f tilde g tilde minus g tilde f tilde. And of course, modular h, that commutator is zero because we, uh, modular h, we're dealing with the usual commutative functions. But uh, so we're expecting that maybe this commutator is h times something interesting. And what that should be would depend on differential of a function f, differential of a function g. And so notice that uh, f and g are uh, really reductions of f tilde and g tilde modular h. And uh, so, uh, a pi, which has been applied to the FDG, is what is called a Poisson by a vector corresponding to the symplectic form. Uh, so this is a section of second exterior power of the tangent bundle. And uh, so this is a standard def uh, definition of symplectic geometry. Uh, if we use a symplectic form, then it identifies tangent and cotangent bundle. And uh, so we can convert the original symplectic form into a section of lambda two of the tangent bundle. So once we have that section, we can insert as two arguments the complete differentials dfdg. And so that is supposed to describe at least uh, to first order in H. Uh, that's supposed to describe the commutator in the sheaf of non-commutative functions. So, so this is some sort of uh, approximation of one would need for, for honest uh, quantum field theory, but uh, this is a, a fairly explicit mathematical object. And so uh, it's due to work of uh, uh, many people, so I will try to, to uh, mention the names a little later. So this uh, choice is, uh, if it is possible at all to, to make this choice, and in algebraic geometry, there is indeed an obstruction. So sometimes you don't know if, uh, if such a thing uh, exists. Uh, but uh, uh, such a non-unique choice of uh, OH uh, gives a certain characteristic class. It's called a Delin class. And uh, so basically all possible different choices 
are, uh, at least they give classes in a, a certain cohomology group. So this cohomology group is built by looking at the second Durham cohomology of M, which is the same as topological, second topological uh, cohomology of our variety with coefficients in C. And then we just put a power series in H, and then we maybe we want to allow a simple pole, uh, just put a one over H. So uh, under certain, under extra conditions that we don't need to worry about now, uh, so the choice of OH, again, it's a non-unique choice, but it's uh, information about that choice is somehow hidden in a certain class, and this is called the Delin class of the quantization. And so Delin class is really just a formal Laran uh, power series uh, uh, with uh, coefficients in, in second Durham cohomology of M. And uh, so it always, the simple pole part is always the class of the symplectic form that we, we started with. And then the high components, uh, again, so um, as I mentioned before, there might be obstructions to actually having them zero, uh, but uh, at least with some sort of choice, uh, maybe it's with some non-trivial omegas, you should be able to find some OH. So uh, this theory in the case of C infinity manifolds, this is based on work of de Welder Lecomte and then Fedosov and then later Deligne. And in algebraic setting, this uh, class uh, has been studied by Bizrokovnikov and Kaledin, who just formulated the conditions when uh, it contains full information about the choice of OH. So basically for projective M or for a fine M, this always holds. And in general, this is some sort of uh, Hodge theory condition. Okay, so now suppose we already know that functions were, were quantized and quantization that was chosen. So the question, what about uh, quantization of modules? So uh, we, we could be looking for coherent shifts of modules over non-commutative shift of algebras. And uh, we just, uh, want some sort of flatness condition over formal power series to, to have an idea that this is a nice deformation of what? Well, of what sometimes should be called the principal symbol. So if modular H, uh, our, sh our shift of OH modules should reduce to the usual coherent shift over, over OM, right? So essentially the problem is this, we have we have deformed uh, our commutative functions in a non-commutative direction. And then we start with a coherent sheaf over commutative functions. Can we also deform it in a non-commutative direction? It turns out that in general, uh, there can be some obstructions to that. And uh, again, in general, this is rather a heavy problem if we're uh, trying to go for if and only if condition. So one version of the question would be, what restrictions uh, does existence of quantization impose on E? So it turns out that not every, uh, every sheaf does admit uh, such a quantization E H. So uh, today we'll be uh, discussing which restrictions uh, appear uh, from looking at a particular characteristic class of this. So this characteristic class reminds of something that shows up in Riemann-Roch theor theorem, or maybe even at a Singer index theorem. So it does contain the usual chain character of E, and this is the commutative shift that they are trying to deform. Then there is the exponent of the class, which, uh, which is responsible for the choice, particular choice of non-commutative functions. And then another correcting term uh, is uh, what is called A hat genus of the tangent bar bundle of M. So this A hat genus is sort of uh, related to, uh, uh, to Todd uh, genus that shows up in Riemann-Roch theorem. And by itself, it, it uh, shows up in index theorem. Okay, so uh, if we write this formula, we could just ask, you know, where does this lie? And this class can be understood as element of the Durham cohomology group uh, of original M maybe with the uh, Laurent power series in H, right? So this is, this is kind of a non-commutative, if you want, it's a non-commutative uh, uh, chain character. Uh, and uh, so uh, there is a, an advanced version of it. If we know that the sheaf we're trying to uh, deform is supported on 
on a closed uh, sub-variety of M, we can refine the class to the RAMCO homology with supports on M. Okay. And uh, so then there is uh, the standard residues and geology theorem that says that if further Y happens to be smooth, then that the RAMCO homology with supports of M can be recalculated with some degree shifts to the RAMCO homology of uh, Y itself. All right. So uh, the question that we want to deal with today, so if this quantization exists, what restrictions on churn character does this imply? And so the, uh, the answer will be uh, in terms of churn character of the commutative shift, but modified by this additional factor. All right. So uh, uh, let's maybe uh, look at the earlier work. So. Uh, so earlier work, a lot of this was focusing on actually not just uh, a one-way statement. So if quantization exists, then something happens for chain classes, but it was kind of if and only if uh, results. So the first uh, uh, result that we were able to find is a work by Kashivara in 1996. And that studied the case when in our symplectic variety, we consider it a Lagrangian sub-variety Y. So it, it would be half dimensional and the form restricts to zero on Y. And then uh, the sheaf on the ambient space comes from the square root of the canonical bundle of the canonical bundle on Y. So this is, uh, so Kashiwara proved uh, that in this case, uh, quantization uh, can be found. And then later, Dagnall and Shapira uh, so was, uh, were proving a similar result for line bundles uh, on Lagrangian submanifolds and complex analytic symplectic. So, so the difference between the first and the second is that the first is phrased in terms of uh, contact geometry, and then the second is uh, in the world of, uh, in the category of symplectic manifolds. So uh, then uh, also Nest and Sigan produced related constructions when modules were quantized in the C infinity case, and then uh, Bordeman's uh, thesis and uh, uh, a few related papers around 2005 were related to obstructions to quantization in the case when uh, Y, the support of a sheaf is a coisotropic submanifold, and maybe one is considering uh, the structure shift to be quantized. So then later, uh, so uh, Ginsburg, Kaledin, Picharinch, and myself considered the case of uh, line bundles on Lagrangian submanifolds in algebraic geometry, and again uh, in full generality. And then later, uh, uh, Taiji Chen and myself extended it to vector bundles on Lagrangian subvarieties. So uh, it, at at least in the case of vector bundles on subvarieties, uh, just writing uh, the, that some sort of chain classes should vanish, so this turns out to be not enough. And uh, what uh, in, in our 2018 paper, we conclude that, uh, so do we, if we have a vector bundle on a subvariety, if we projectivize it, that projectivization should admit a flat algebraic connection. So this is a kind of stronger condition, which doesn't just get reduced to, to chain classes as such. So, so this is what was uh, uh, known before, but basically in all of these cases, the support has to be a sm smooth, and then the sheaf supported on it is just a vector bundle that you push forward to M and therefore it becomes a coherent sheaf. But for purposes of application, to representation theory, it is really important to be able to consider at least singular Lagrangian supports and maybe then uh, more complicated sheaves, at least around the singularity of why your sheaf E would be not a vector bundle. So, uh, and in that case, we are proving just a one-way statement, uh, which nevertheless is sufficient for for some, uh, for some work, for some applications in representation theory. So uh, this, is, this is the theorem. So earlier we have defined some sort of adjustment of uh, churn character. Uh, so churn character adjusted by a class of quantization and by uh, a hat genus. And so 
if you want, you could call it quantum uh, chain character. And we're uh, stating that if you take its uh, even dimensional components, if you look at its even dimensional components, uh, then uh, they can only be non-zero in a particular range. And that range ends at the complex dimension of M. So with two N, right. So if M was a complex projective, then a priori cohomology could go to degree all the way for, all the way to degree for N. And so we're kind of saying that the upper half of all of these classes dis must disappear. And, uh, and then there is another reason if, uh, if the support has co-dimension Q, uh, then also the junior degrees of this quantum ch uh, chain character must also vanish. The non-zero terms could possibly start only with degree 2Q. But that part is actually a standard property of, of chain character. If you're, compute, if you're applying it to a sheaf which has a certain uh, co-dimension of support, then the first few junior pieces of chain character would vanish. So the interesting part, uh, which is sort of covered in, in our work, is that the higher half of chain classes just disappears. And in some cases, actually, this result isn't really saying much. So there are two special uh, cases where we're not uh, uh, claiming uh, a lot. So one is that when uh, M, the symplectic variety, is cotangent bundle of another smooth variety. So in this case, the cotangent bundle is, of course, uh, uh, homotopy equivalent to the original bundle. And so these higher groups where the components vanish, they just, uh, the, the groups themselves vanish. And then uh, also, if you look at the case of uh, uh, affine varieties, then, then it's somehow, well, uh, at least without support, it, it, it's kind of boring. But for, for projective symplectic uh, case, this is uh, not trivial. And then once you turn on the support, it, it also becomes interesting. So uh, there's a special case when uh, the support is equidimensional of, of a particular complex dimension. So again, uh, 2n was complex dimension of m itself, q was the, uh, was the uh, co-dimension of y, and it's, uh, so there is integrability of characteristics theorem that in this case implies that the dimension of y is still at least the half of dimension of, of uh, m. And so in that case, the, uh, the cohomology groups that contain our uh, chain character can be reworked in barrel moore homology groups of Y. Right, so we, uh, so I guess maybe one uh, nice overview about uh, chain character in the usual barrel moore homology for the commutative case. So in Fulton's book on intersection theory uh, at the later chapter, so there will be a nice discussion that uh, sheaves uh, even on a, support it on a singular algebraic variety Y, the correct target for their chain character is barrel moore homology. And so it turns out that same still works after you deform uh, commutative functions to non-commutative functions. And then, so once you re do this readjustment, then we see that uh, again, uh, more or less, uh, we're saying half of this expected chain character components are equal to zero. And uh, it, what happens in an extreme case, so again, the dimension of support is maybe half the dimension of uh, M, so this, this number is N, and then plus uh, maybe this little adjustment P. And so in the case when uh, this P vanishes, which is to say when the support is, is Lagrangian, it should be exactly half the dimension of M, the whole class collapses to a single cycle class of, of our sheaf. So we are saying that all the higher pieces which could be there, they must vanish in order for the quantization to exist. All right, so, uh, so that's, that's the uh, formulation. And then uh, there are some refinements and consequences. So one of them uh, is uh, sort of just a tease of Ethereum, really um, will not uh, explain the most important part. So if we, uh, if we have a globally defined 
uh, section of this non-commutative sheaf of functions, and I call this section by u. And then if we take any quantized sheaf, uh, that sheaf will have cohomology and function will, will be acting on cohomology and we need some compactness condition to ensure the cohomology groups are finite dimensional. And so we could try, try to compute the alternating sum of traces. Again, non-commutative function acting on cohomology of non-commutative sheaf. And actually to make things work nicely in all of this theory, although original functions are defined over Taylor series or formal series in H, one eventually needs to localize in H and, uh, and work over Laurent power series. So that really simplifies uh, some calculations. And uh, basically, so the, the theorem that uh, will follow from our main result after we actually clean up some technicalities related to uh, ser duality and, and similar properties in the non-commutative setting. So again, this is you know, theorem slash conjecture. So is that uh, this trace can be computed by uh, uh, integrating what is a cup, uh, a cup product of the quantum churn character of uh, EH. And by the previous page, this is just really support cycle of E. There isn't a lot of information there, just, just uh, the reducible components of support and multiplicities. And then you wedge it with a certain uh, differential or class of a differential form that comes out of our uh, original non-commutative function on M. So how this form is uh, obtained, so this part I will have to skip. Uh, the, there is a bit of uh, detail related to Hochschild homology. Uh, but basically there is uh, a, this sort of theorem is uh, a consequence of the previous theorem if we are allowed to use some sort of uh, homological properties of modules over OH. So this, this uh, second is not quite finished, but uh, very much work in progress. And so uh, this has applications to work of Bezrakovnikov and Losev in uh, representation theory. And in fact, since 2013, we've been motivated a lot by people that come and ask whether we are done yet with this theorem or not. And uh, we're very grateful uh, just for everyone who, who was sort of pushing us towards this. Uh, so, all right, so uh, there is also a special case when we talk about, uh, when we're trying to quantize a sheaf which comes out of a vector bundle on a smooth uh, variety inside M. In the smooth case, uh, this variety must have the property of being coisotropic. So this is a restriction on the sheaf. If, it's, if it is supported on some other uh, smooth manifold, it cannot be quantized. But one, one restriction would be that support is coisotropic, which means that if we take our Poisson bivector, which was a section in lambda 2TM, it should project to zero on, uh, uh, as a section of the lambda 2 of a normal bundle on Y. So this is one of the ways of, uh, of stating the coisotropic condition. Then and moreover, if there is anything that's coisotropic, uh, then the tangent bundle of a coisotropic submanifold has what is called a null foliation subbundle. And in some cases, it is called canonical subbundle of, uh, of rank uh, equal to codimension of Y. So you know, for any coisotropic submanifold, there is a way of taking conormal bundle and then using our symplectic form to convert it to, into a subbundle in a tangent bundle. And so this uh, subbundle ha has an interesting integrability property. So if you take two vector fields which land in F, then their bracket also lands in F. And so if we uh, we are lucky enough, then actually we can find a morphism from Y onto another smooth variety Q. Uh, for Q, the dimension would be equal to 2N minus 2Q. Uh, again, Q is a co-dimension of uh, Y. So that our null foliation is just vector fields tangent along the fibers. And of course, when Y is quasitropic, this picture collapses because 2N minus 2Q is equal to zero. 
a Q could be taken just a single point and in, it's uh, sort of not much is going on. But in uh, higher dimensional quasitropic subvarieties, you could uh, try to go looking for Q, but sometimes there is an obstruction for existence of Q. But let's uh, pretend for a second that it does exist. Then uh, once there is a map from Y to Q, uh, there is pullback on the RAM cohomology. An additional theor theorem that we are uh, stating is that our quantum chain character of EH can be reworked in a class in the RAM cohomology of Y. And I'm skipping the Laurent series just to unload notation. Uh, but this class is not just on Y, it's actually in the pullback, in the image of the pullback of, of the RAM cohomology of Q, right? Uh, so uh, the remark is that Q, of course, exists reasonably rarely, but it is always possible to find that, uh, to define, reinterpret the image of those differential forms on Q, how they, they're supposed to pull back to Y. Okay, so, um, now, uh, and so our statement is that uh, in addition to vanishing of certain components, it is uh, the non-zero components should be restricted to a certain sub subspace of the RAM cohomology of Y. Okay, uh, so uh, this is a further restriction. But uh, even for, for vector bundles, uh, I guess, uh, uh, maybe for line bundles, it's uh, sorted out. But in general, the, there is an issue of uh, is is this set of restrictions on uh, on chain classes is this complete set of restrictions? So uh, can we find any other classes that must vanish? And at the moment, we are not really sure. It's possible that we are, in some sense, uh, just uh, there are two two collections of vanishing conditions, and we are just outlining just one of them. All right, so what are ingredients of proof? It turns out that uh, we've tried many methods, but in the end, the one that worked was sort of uh, conceptually obvious, but it was it is based on really heavy duty technology. So one technology is formality of, of SIGM calculus on cyclical chains. And so this is uh, developed by, there are many names associated with this. So Tamarkin and Sagan first uh, back in 2000 uh, formulated uh, something that, sh some conjectures and, and uh, first outlines of proofs. And then Tamarkin, Sagan, Dolgoshev are authors of a late 2009 papers. And so uh, symplectic geometry can be uh, viewed at least in three different settings, the C-infinity setting, the holomorphic, and then the algebraic. And then so, uh, and within algebraic, one can impose the affine restriction if necessary. So all, all of this, uh, uh, so Tamarkin, Sigan, Dolgoshev, Shoykit, and Will Walker essentially work in a C-infinity setting or holomorphic setting. And then uh, uh, Kalak, Rossi, and Vandenberg uh, in a sequence of papers, they settle um, this in for algebraic uh, geometry. But this is basically a, a certain statement about, uh, about commutative functions. And so I uh, just will we'll, uh, uh, get to that a little later and I will kind of specify what, what sort of statement. Then the second very powerful ingredient is algebraic index theorem, which also can be tried in, in three different incarnations, C infinity, uh, then holomorphic, and then algebraic uh, geometry. And so we were able to find uh, uh, in algebraic geometry just a fine case. And then uh, so, so there are uh, C infinity uh, proofs and holomorphic proofs and so this is again a sequence of papers starting with Nest and Sigan, uh, so C infinity case. Uh, then there's uh, Brester, Nest, and Sigan related later to Riemann Roch theorem. And then there are some simplified proofs by uh, Chen and Dolgoshev and uh, Katanev, Felder, Wilwalker, Flaum, Pastuma, Tank, and Wilwalker. And actually, 
uh, from computational point of view, it was very important for us to look at a rather recent uh, contribution by Gu, Li, and, and Shu uh, in 2019. And so uh, basically, as you have seen in the formula, there is a hat genus and then exponents of some classes. And actually to uh, the computational techniques which produce all these classes are quite non-trivial, right? So, so one needs some sort of technology uh, in this direction. Okay, so what is the broad outline of what's happening in our work? So one starts with the by now classical uh, theory of uh, Chern-Korn's character. So what if one starts with uh, a commutative ring, let's assume at first it's a commutative ring R, and then uh, this ring has different uh, homological invariants. So there is Hochschild homology and cohomology, but for Chern character, the important ones are uh, called uh, the negative cyclic homology, uh, which is uh, sometimes denoted as H C minus, and then periodic cyclic homology. So, so these homology theories are obtained by looking at complexes formed by, uh, we actually assume that R is not a ring, but an algebra over maybe complex numbers. And so one forms complexes uh, pre, uh, manufactured out of tensor powers of R uh, with some standard differentials. And there are slightly different flavors that give negative cyclic homology and periodic cyclic homology. The way this is defined, uh, the negative cyclic homology always maps to periodic cyclic homology. So what happens is that, uh, uh, okay, maybe uh, a second later. So uh, in the particular case, when the ring R is the ring of, of polynomial or regular functions on a smooth affine variety, then HP dot computes the RAM cohomology of M or just topological cohomology of M. And uh, H uh, C minus, so this will be related to truncated versions of the RAM complex. And so, uh, uh, sorry for the typo in, in Hodge filtration, uh, but basically this is a sequence of results uh, from Fagin, Sigan, and then Wibbel, and later Keller clarified the categorical setup of this. So, I, Again, at first, the, for arbitrary rings, there was a particular homological theory. And then it turned out that for affine varieties, we're dealing either with the RAM, same cohomology as the RAM cohomology, or maybe truncated version of the RAM cohomology. But uh, the reason why these abstract, for abstract rings, these uh, groups are considered, is that a complex of projective modules over R uh, or complexes of projective modules admit uh, a version of uh, Chern character, and that is called Chern Kohn's character, and uh, it takes values in negative cyclic homology. Right. So, uh, and then of course you can compose it and land and get in a Chern character with values in periodic cyclic, and this is what usually people do because periodic cyclic is much more computable than uh, H. Uh, C minus, right? But uh, the important feature for our uh, argument is that the originally it lands into H C minus, and then later we're sending it to H P. Okay, so uh, in some settings, uh, again, for instance, in the, uh, this wonderful book, uh, Cyclic Homology by Lade, you can find explicit formulas in the case when a class in K zero of R is given by a projector in the matrix algebra. So then there is just explicit uh, polynomial flavor formula for chain character. And then uh, uh, if we are not working on a fine variety, if we uh, want to work with uh, smooth varieties, maybe projective, maybe quasi-projective, then in that case, the ring of functions should be replaced by the category of sheaves or categories of vector bundles. So this is somehow, uh, uh, we can think of a category as generalized rings. So in a ring, we can multiply uh, elements of a ring or multiply functions. In a category, we can compose morphisms. So if there is a morphism from F to G and from G to H, this composition of two morphisms replaces the product in the ring. 
And then, uh, so if you use this as a guideline, then uh, cyclic homology theories extend pretty quickly uh, from, uh, from rings to categories. And this is, uh, again, for derived categories, this has been clarified by Bernard Keller. And, uh, and so he sort of explained how uh, this is constructed in the derived setting. Yeah. So, uh, so we have this abstract uh, homology theory. And uh, so what, of course, it's only good if we can compute this, uh, uh, these homology theories. And there are two slightly different versions. First, we could look at the category of sheaves on the whole variety or manifold. Uh, or we can also shifify the standard complex uh, for, you know, involving tens of products of algebras and then try to use that shifify. At least, uh, and it looks plausible based on the work of Keller in the commutative case, it looks plausible that categories and shifified versions, they lead to the same uh, cohomology groups, but the categorical version at least maps into the shifified version. So if for purposes of our work, then we don't care whether this map is an isomorphism. We just want to know where this cons chain character will be landing. And so we, uh, we can do the computation in this case and uh, we uh, get to the point where we say uh, periodic cyclic homology, and sorry it's for switching notation, this is what I denoted by HP before. Uh, so it's a certain direct sum and I renormalized it uh, so that uh, what we are taking direct sum of will be the RAM cohomology of M. Uh, M has complex dimension to N, so real dimension for N. So H to N is the middle dimension uh, for, for M. And then, uh, so we're saying let's, I want to do the adjustment uh, by 2R and R runs from negative to positive value of N. So essentially we're saying all, uh, all the RAM cohomology is, uh, is there, and then there are additional coefficients for RAM power series. Now for negative cyclic homology, it, in this particular computation, it actually deserves its name of being negative. So in this case, one takes just the uh, non-negative, uh, sorry, non-positive values of R, and that is what uh, HC minus is. And uh, so then even before we, we compute Korn's uh, uh, chain character, we see that this chain character actually originally exists on the level of HC minus, and then we send it to periodic thing. And uh, so we also prove that the natural map from the top row to, uh, uh, to the bottom row so the map on the left is compatible with the U standard inclusions of direct sums. So for trivial reasons, we see that for positive values of R, the components must vanish just because that class comes from negative cyclic homology. So uh, the only issue is uh, the positive components of what? And so this is where we need to uh, compute that uh, the uh, image of chain Korn's character corresponds to exactly the non-commutative uh, characteristic class that we, uh, that we considered. And so this is the usual chain character and then adjusted by A hat genus and exponent of a, of a class responsible for quantization. So again, it might be our poor knowledge of literature, but on one hand, the class was used back uh, all the way back in 1995 and maybe even before. So it does show up, of course, in the work of Nest and Sigan, but it, we had hard time finding, uh, saying that this class is exactly matches the Chern, uh, Korn's Chern character construction. So part of our work was, was to prove that this matching works in algebraic geometry. Again, some of the results uh, exist in C infinity case, but not in algebraic geometry. So uh, overall, once we, uh, once we prove that the computations of HC minus and periodic cyclic works out, and once we know that uh, the chain character exists on the level of HC minus, then all of the additional components that show up in HP should vanish. 
And then once we identify it in, on the level of the RAM cohomology, then the, the theorem that I stated first, the vanishing of some components comes actually very cheap, right? So uh, the only issues are, of course, just being able to perform all three computations. And uh, uh, so the, uh, the remarks uh, to this, uh, for this situation is that if we try to compute the commutative case, the negative cyclic homology, as I mentioned before, it uh, involves uh, some filtrations uh, yeah, for uh, under the RAM complex. And these restrictions for chain character of coherent sheaves also exist in the commutative case. That's just slightly different. For instance, if you are looking at the chain class of a vector bundle or a line bundle, so it sits in the second Durham cohomology of M, but in, algebra, in algebraic geometry setting, that group maps into H2 of O. And so we have in algebraic geometry some restrictions that say that chain class must project to zero in H2 of O. So some vanishings also work, but what happens is they're actually uh, more non-trivial in the commutative case, and once you turn on non-commutativity, the negative cyclic homology simplifies a lot. And so our statements become more trans, uh, transparent. And then the A hat genus, just I wanted to include for completeness, it is the standard A hat genus that is obtained by taking chain roots of a tangent bundle, for each of these roots computing uh, sort of uh, 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 so, so the, uh, or, I mean, the determinant can be understood in, in terms of uh, the curvature matrix. Uh, so, uh, so we use this series involving the reciprocals of hyperbolic sign and then square root. So this is uh, something that you also see in the index formula, Atiyah Singer index formula. Uh, so uh, yes, as I mentioned, the main reason why the components of quantized chain class chain character vanish is that the class in periodic cyclic homology is an image of a class in negative cyclic homology. Uh, and we have proved our theorem for uh, the case of the sim algebraic symplectic manifold. Uh, it's not very likely that it extends to uh, algebraic Poisson manifolds, but there is a certain subclass of Poisson manifolds which are called unimodular, which uh, basically you have a Poisson structure plus something that replaces the symplectic volume form. So a top degree form with a particular property. So it seems that it should be possible at least on the level of statements to make such a statement. But the techniques that we're using in a symplectic case don't really work uh, at all uh, in, in the uh, uh, unimodular Poisson case. And so, uh, as I mentioned, we had to reprove uh, algebraic index theorem for al general algebraic varieties. A fine case was known due to Chen and Dolgoshev, and uh, we could only find uh, C infinity, or maybe holomorphic version in the literature, but uh, sort of, uh, so our proof works over a characteristic zero. So oh, uh, to do this in the symplectic case, we use the technique of formal geometry. Formal geometry is a certain technique for obtaining characteristic classes, which works when your objects are all uh, trivial in local coordinates. So if you, 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 around every point, you can introduce the coordinates, which are sort of standard if you want. So, uh, and of course, in algebraic geometry, if you take any point and you take the local ring, then the local rings of different points don't have to be isomorphic, but there is a completed version of this, which can be identified with power series, but more than in one way. And so, so formal geometry considers this infinite variety, which uses all different choices of coordinates. And the same thing with vector bundles. Your vector bundle can locally be trivialized and quantization uh, of a vector bundle as opposed to coherent sheaf, quantization could also be uh, brought to a local standard form. So in this case, there is a technique of formal geometry. And uh, so in the commutative uh, world, this, uh, this technique was used in a series of paper by Kala, Crossy, and Vandenberg. So they 
the difficulty is that you somehow need to justify uh, working with uh, infinite dimensional torsors over algebraic varieties. And, uh, but uh, you know, one approach is to say, you start with these infinite dimensional torsors and maybe you don't even care whether they honestly exist or not. What should exist is the, uh, the RAM cohomology of these torsors. And uh, again, there are different flavors of the technique and uh, one of the easiest of them says, never mind about infinite dimensional torsors, but uh, their cohomology groups do make sense and their Durham complexes do make sense. So we had to uh, sort of borrow this from the commutative world into non-commutative world. So we were twisting it by non-commutativity. Uh, and so we just work out the non-commutative version of formal geometry. Again, non-commutative version of formal geometry was considered uh, by uh, other people in C infinity setting, but definitely not in algebraic. So this is, uh, again, so uh, on philosophical level, our proof is, is very transparent, but in technical detail, you kind of need to dig into this and sort of clarify things, uh, what you're talking about. So, uh, there was also a refinement that I mentioned in the case when a vector bundle E was on a smooth coisotropic variety that its chain character comes from a non-existent uh, uh, base Q to which Y is, is uh, mapping. And so, so this is actually based on a certain observation of Zygon uh, where uh, sort of it starts at the point where Chern, uh, character is uh, viewed as something that's induced by a functor between categories. So if you start with a, a uh, with your E, which is maybe a complex of vector bundles or complex of non-commutative vector bundles, if you want, then such uh, a complex defines a functor from vector spaces to complexes of vector bundles. You take a vector space U and then you tensor it over C with your chosen perfect complex and uh, that gives you a functor between categories. Again, vector spaces to, uh, to perfect complexes on Y if you want. And uh, so Chen Kohn's character can be viewed by saying, well, we have homology theories for categories and they are functorial covariant. And uh, if we have uh, some sort of canonical class on the side of vector spaces, its image will produce a class that depends only on, on the perfect complex you're tensoring with. So there is this uh, a fancier version of the uh, chain character construction, which uses uh, um, these tensor products and uh, an old observation by Zygon. Uh, so is that this functor can be factored through intermediate category and that intermediate category is just modules over endomorphisms of, of E. And, uh, and so you need to do a similar computation uh, of HC0 and HP0. And if you carry it out for, for the endomorphism complex, then it turns out that this, is, this will give you the cohomology of non-existent uh, Q. Right? So uh, the Q doesn't uh, exist most of the time, but the group that should be replacing it uh, is actually can be defined rigorously through uh, endomorphism uh, or sheaves of endomorphism algebras. Okay, so, and so basically this is the source, uh, another source of restrictions on uh, chain character of a quantizable sheaf. All right, so, and uh, so that's it. Uh, would be, um, thank you at this point. So. So there are some examples that, uh, so what could be discussed, but they're all uh, fairly long. So maybe let me stop now. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I now ask if anyone has any questions. So, so maybe just uh, as a, you know, uh, after comment, uh, so there are different flavors of quantization. So there is geometric quantization and then the deformation quantization, the, the, the ones that we consider. And also there is a theory of local systems or modules over differential operators. 
And in these sorts of results, they all, all come together. So for instance, if you take a quantizable bundle and you uh, twist it by a local system, you get another quantizable bundle. And so half the canonical class also shows up on geometric quantization. And it is an example of a sheaf which satisfies our restriction on chain character. But uh, we would like to be able to understand this more. And it seems to be related to the fancier versions of geometry and uh, so uh, DG stacks and, and things of that sort. But we are not able to understand it yet. So, yeah. Thank you. And just uh, thank you again. Last chance if there are no questions. No? Okay. We thank you again. Thank you. And we continue now for the last talk in 10 minutes. Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Doing well. So you're right. at UIC, huh? I am, and you were at UIC. I was at UIC, yes. I've been there, I think, just for three years, so. Hi, Elizabeth, nice to meet you in person. <laughs> nice to meet you in person, too. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll say that I enjoy Hawaii much more than Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I know what? I know Hawaii as just a tiny bit because my wife's extended family. Oh, okay. We visited them just once, but somehow we still feel we've got some roots there. Yeah. So, what island did you say that they live on? I think they live on Big Island. Oh, okay. All right. So I should, should I? Can you test your screen sharing? Yeah. Um, I want to make just a couple of announcements before your talk, so maybe I'll ask you to test it now and then and then switch it off and switch it back on when you're ready for your talk. That's good. That's good. All right, so that works for you. Yeah. Can you guys see everything? Oh, I forgot to stop again. Hold on, I've got to stop. Okay. Um,